Brothers and sisters, we gather once again this week to do the business of our great union. It is a time for reunions and for making new friends. It's a time to recognize what we've accomplished and determine where we will go next. It is a time to experience the power of us. You may ask, what does that mean exactly? Well, during the State of the Union, throughout the next five days, and throughout the next year, you'll come to understand the power of us. CSEA has had a productive and engaging year. After years of budget deficits, furloughs, no pay raises, takeaways, and increasing health caps, health care caps, we turned the corner last year, and we started down an even better road this year. We work hard to keep pension initiatives off the ballot, to pass Proposition 30, to hold legislators accountable. OK, that one was a little bit pretty tough to do, but we've tried. And to improve the lives of our members, students, and community. We have shown the power of us, and it feels good. Our members are seeing the fruits of their labor. Finally, we are negotiating pay raises, restorations, and our laid-off members are being hired back to work. And health care caps are finally being raised as well. So I want to applaud all of you who, in this room, volunteer to lead your chapter, invoke your power at the bargaining table, and support and defend your fellow workers under duress. Thank you to each of you who give you of your time, your energy, and your passion to your union, to your members, and to CSEA. We've shown the world the power of us, but we have so much work to do. But you kicked butt this year, and you should be very proud. When I was elected, I stood before you in this very hall and said it was a priority that your board of directors be accessible to you. I've continued to work hard to keep that promise again this year while remaining fiscally responsible. Board members have been to numerous events, both at local chapters and by representing CSCA with other organizations. And we highlight these events at each board meeting in our board reports. I have committed in this first term as I mentioned last year, to reach out to the smaller chapters, more remote chapters, who have not necessarily had the opportunity to have a state officer visit your chapter. It's important to me that each member knows that all members matter. It does not matter where you live or what position you hold. We all hold the power of being a classified employee. And I will continue to bring the message of the union to all corners of this state and all points in between to be sure that anyone who wants to can see the leadership of their association. Now, I continue to reach out this year with the regional representatives, the area directors, and CSA staff to visit our smaller chapters across the state. The time span is so valuable to me to be the kind of leader you expect and deserve. We had the pleasure of visiting the Imperial County chapters in regions 53 and 98 in the fall. These chapters border up against Yuma, Arizona, and Mexicali, Mexico. In December, I visited the chapters in region 71 and region 6 in area A, which center mostly between Orland and Red Bluff. In the new year, I headed to region 87 and visited the chapters in the Tuolumne and Calaveras counties of area E. And soon after, I visited a few chapters in the low and high desert of Region 31 in Area F. And then in March, I ventured to Regions 26 and 37 along the Central Coast in Area I, where in addition to seeing our members, I enjoyed a bit of nature with some elephant seals, zebras, and a very lovely drive through a swarm of bees. An experience Field Director Charlie Getchus and I will not soon forget. Lastly, I made my way to the great north, to Region 14, which covers Crescent City down to Humboldt, Southern Humboldt in Area B. These were all engaging visits with our members, their administrators and superintendents, as well as the students we serve. 
these trips are amazing and so valuable to me, and I have been able to meet people that I would have never been able to meet before. And I've learned so much from these new friends and mentors. I've seen gorgeous and unique places in our great state and been to important events. Who knows, some of these events may end up having historical value someday. So I'd like to take a few moments and share some of the photos that I've taken and others have taken of my visits. I hope you enjoy them. Oh. I just love our staff. As you can see, I've gotten around a bit. You know, these visits also to me be, tend to be a bit fun for me and the chapter leaders especially, who might have, shall we say, a superintendent that might be a bit problematic. Now, I'm sure none of the superintendents or administrators visiting us today fall into this category, but as you probably know, some leaders are not friends to their classified staff. Nevertheless, the curiosity and inquisitiveness of these district officials can be quite humorous. They often say, you came all the way here to visit us? What they really mean is, why are you here and what do we do? <laughs> I'd like to share one story that still makes me chuckle today. On one visit, a superintendent was very friendly. He greeted me with a huge hello, hearty handshake, and had me sit down in a spot where he could wheel his chair right, next up, right up next to me as if we had been buddies for a very long time. Well, this chapter had been having issues. Of course, I was aware of those issues. And one being that they had a double-digit budget reserve that is a high double-digit budget reserve and still had furloughs and layoffs and did not want to do any type of restorations. So I started off conversation with the usual pleasantries and played nice for a short time and then slowly moved the conversation toward the more difficult topics. And as I did, you could noticeably see the superintendent slowly wheel himself away from me. <laughs> and when we finished, he was on the opposite side of the room and everyone knew what had just happened. Needless to say, we were no longer best buddies. But later I found out that the chapter had turned up the heat after the visit and received what they wanted and more. <laughs> <laughs> 
It has continued to be an amazing opportunity, again, for me to see firsthand the differences between what takes place in our most rural schools compared to our inner city schools. It gives me the knowledge and the facts to address issues with the Department of Education and legislators, both within California and federally, and to advocate in a more informed way for our members. Again, these have been incredible experiences, and I hope the members have found my visits valuable as well. I believe we have some chapters that have sent delegates here for the first time to conference because of these visits. Welcome to all those delegates. Now, training has been and continues to be one of our association's highest priorities. CSEA has a rich history of recruiting and developing members and deploying them in leadership roles. The Membership Trainers Bureau, also known as MTB, was created to recruit and develop high potential leaders from within the membership. The MTB seeks to continue in that tradition. We revamped and unveiled a new process for the Member Trainers Bureau this year, this past year. Those wishing to be appointed to Trainers Bureau now go through a more intensive process, which begins by submitting an application complete with a resume. Once members are screened and selected to continue, they are invited to the Trainer Certification Program. And this event includes content on adult learning principles, development of presentation skills, keeping your participants engaged, facilitation skills, observation, and providing feedback. And at the conclusion of the Trainer Certification Program, recommendations for appointment to the MTB are given to the association president for final consideration. Member trainers must have the ability to teach and present leadership development model training programs in the lifestyle and personal growth and career themes, teach and present officer skills trainings and professional development programs, present training programs designed by the education and training staff that result in continuing education unit certificates for CSEA members and display good judgment and decision-making when working with member leaders and staff, prepare status reports and updates on demand. So I encourage you, if this interests you, the application deadline for the Members Trainer Bureau is September 1st, 2015. I'm also pleased to report once again that we saw an increase in participation in many of our trainings. We made a slight change to last year's Maintenance and Operations Academy. We broke this into two sessions, one in the North and one in the South. Members increase their knowledge and skills for the important work they do while completing extremely important certification at minimal costs. This year, the committee will explore the possibility of again revising how we present the content. And so you may see five to six one-day trainings spread out across the state. We're also exploring the option to do an academy for our food service members. I encourage you to visit the job classification think tanks taking place on Wednesday morning. These are new this year and will help us better serve each of the classifications we represent, as well as give members a unique opportunity to network with the members who do the same work you do each, uh, each day. Our paraeducator conference was one of our most successful ever. More than 750 participants <laughs> descended upon San Jose to attend more than 50 breakout sessions on a wide variety of important topics. It was another great event, and it, I'm sure it will grow even more at the next paraeducator conference to take place April 12th through the 14th, 2016 in Ontario, California. So mark your calendars, because you won't want to miss it. Our pre-retirement seminar showed attendance of nearly 2,800 members at 16 seminars across the state. Now, it doesn't matter if you are ready to retire or years away from that milestone. All members should attend their pre-retirement seminars to plot the course toward retirement. And CalPERS has a new website and revamped education forms that I'm sure you will hear more about from CalPERS President Rob Fechner on Wednesday during the CalPERS report. We saw more than 21,000 members and staff participate in training events last year. I congratulate our Chapter President's Leadership Program, CPLP graduates, all those who attend Union Steward Training and earn their jackets, Chapter Leaders who attended Officer Skills Trainings, and members who attended the Know Your Rights and other trainings through their local field offices. I know that many of you sitting here today attended these classes and workshops. 
You broadened your skills through CSEA's many training opportunities. Because of this, you will better be, be better prepared to meet the needs of your chapter, region, area, and the state association. This is just to highlight a few of the many opportunities our members have taken advantage of to be engaged in their union and improve their lives. I'm proud of the progress we've made, and I'm very excited to put our training agenda fully into action. I know our members will be well served by our continued and innovative approach to member training and professional development. Now, after conference last year, we put together our young worker group made up of members that are 35 and younger. As many of you have heard me preach, we will not all be in our positions we now hold forever. And we must mentor and cultivate our next generation of leaders if we are, truly, are to truly last for another 89 years, which we certainly will do. The Young Worker Task Force worked hard this year to put together our first ever CalGen Summit. You will meet the group and hear more later this week from the CalGen chairperson, Anthony Moniz. I'm so proud of the work they did this year and can't wait to see what they come up with next. CSCA continues to work in coalition with education and labor partners both in and outside of California. And I want to begin by giving a big thank you to past President Clyde Rivers, who continues to serve us so well as an AFL-CIO Executive Vice President. Clyde's dedication has earned CSE a great deal of respect from the many AFL-CIO unions, and he sits on key committees, having a voice in labor activities across the nation. Unfortunately, he is not able to be with us this week as he is attending the AFL-CIO Executive Council meetings in Washington, D.C. I know I speak for all of us when I say his leadership and the value he brings to the nation's labor movement makes us proud. He sends his best wishes for a productive conference and has sent his annual report, which is available at the committee table in the back of the hall. And we continue our important work with the California Labor Federation, where both Vice, Vice President Valdepena and I serve as Vice Presidents on the Executive Council. The power of our voice is heard and helps to shape the California labor agenda. This year is the CLF Biennial Convention, so I encourage all delegates who are interested in serving as a delegate to fill out the forms to be considered. They can be found also at the conference committee desk in the back of the room. One of our, the most basic principles of the union movement is that an injury to one is an injury to all. That's why this year we participated in the Labor Federation's All In To Win campaign. CSA worked hard in this campaign, which brought CSA members out to help in actions with the Apple and Google security guards, Taylor Farms workers, and finally the our, our, our Walmart campaign, where members came out on release time to help work and organize the campaign. I was proud to stand with and speak on behalf of the Walmart workers at a Black Friday event in Long Beach. Much progress has been made thanks to our efforts. The security guards' work was not contracted out, and they have made movement toward better wages and hours. The our, the Our Walmart campaign showed great movement with workers getting salary increases. The raises were not as high as they pushed for, but it was a good start and we will continue to fight with them until their goals are met. And it's not just me. Your efforts did not go unnoticed. The a CLF awarded CSCA with the All In to Win Organizing Award. We are so proud of the work our members continue to do to help our union brothers and sisters and to strengthen the entire movement. CSA continued our work with the National Coalition of Classified Education Support Employee Unions, NCCESEU. Isn't that a mouthful? CSA is a founding member of this coalition. And I just completed my term as chair of this group this past fall, the fall meeting. In May, we attended the Spring Coalition meeting in conjunction with our annual feder federal lo congressional lobby trip. Overall, the congressional meetings went very well, with progress made towards language in the ESEA reauthorization to provide paraeducators with staff development funding. 
After many years of working toward a national recognition for a classified school employee of the year, similar to the national teacher of the year, we've made real progress this year. The coalition will work with the White House's Champions of Change program to recognize classified employees of the year from the coalition partners. We are very excited about this development and extremely proud of our progress. During the last two years, I have attended the meetings of both the California Ed uh, Education and Labor Coalitions, and I, I've been thinking about the work we did on Prop 30. And as a leading education union in California, the best union for classified workers in the nation, that is, it struck me that the leaders of two other large education unions and I should get together to talk about our mutual issues. Our partnership is important and valuable. We need an open line of communication to discuss the work we have done and what we need to do in the future. So I'm happy to say that after quite a bit of time working to get our schedules to coincide, no easy task, I had the pleasure of meeting with the presidents of the California Teachers Association and the California Federation of Teachers. It was a very productive first meeting, and we have pledged to meet on a regular basis from this point forward. And I'm very pleased to welcome Mr. Eric Hines, the newly elected CTA president here today. You will hear a few remarks from Eric just a little later in the program. So now let me turn for a moment to our association budget. As I mentioned, this has been a much better year in terms of membership and budget than we've seen in recent history. It has been my priority to ensure that we spend your dues dollars wisely and to have the maximum return on investment. It is important to me that we have a budget that is transparent and accurate, as accurate as possible. Because of our collective diligence, I'm happy to report that we are again presenting you with a balanced budget. While the economy and the state budget have begun to improve, we cannot, and I will not lose sight of remaining, prudent and cautious in our fiscal decisions. There is much on the horizon that could set us back, which I will talk more about in a minute. Each of you works hard for your money and then entrusts your dues dollars to us. I take that responsibility seriously and consider it as my utmost crucial duty to you. I want to thank the Budget Committee and CSA staff who work in partnership to prepare the budget that you have before you today. And you will hear more from Executive Director Dave Lowe this, later this afternoon regarding the budget, and you will have an uh, opportunity to ask questions and raise your concerns during the budget session on Thursday. So how many of you heard about a little thing called social media? You know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram? I want to encourage all of you who are on Facebook to like the CSEA page, and of course, the CalPERS page. So just before this conference began, I think I had just under about 2,000 friends and likes on my pages. So I want to encourage you to friend me at Michael Bilbury, which is my CSEA slash personal page, not so personal anymore. And also like my Bilbury number four CalPERS page. You can also friend request almost all of the board of directors in, on Facebook. You can find our links at csca.com under the board of directors page. If you follow me, you can see my activities and learn what part of the state I might be in on any given day, meetings I attend, and generally what is happening with your president. It's sort of like, where's Waldo? Except it's, where's the president? This gives you an opportunity to say exactly what I'm doing for you and the union. And social media is not just a way for us to communicate with you, but also a way that you can communicate with your union. When you see an interesting post from me or from CSCA, like it, comment on it, and even better, share it so that all your friends and fellow members get to see it too. I also want to encourage all of you to follow CSCA, CalPERS, and me on Twitter, although I have to admit, I still have much to learn about Twitter, and I'm definitely not the best tweeter out there. One of our most valuable public relations programs in this organization is the Appreciating Classified Employees Program, also known as ACE. Now, dur during Classified School Employees Week, 10 school districts and colleges participate in our version of the Walk a Mile in Our Shoes program. District administrators, school board members, college trustees, and even community leaders take time out of their day to work 
alongside our members to get a glimpse of what it's like to do the work we do each day. How many of you have participated in this great program? Give a shout out. Well, some are here. This year I had the opportunity to be involved in one of the programs directly. Whittier City 62 Chapter President Jack Lieber, over there somewhere, invited me to be a part of his chapter's program. Toured the district and, many, and saw many of the participants hard at work. In fact, I went to work too. As you know, I'm a bookstore operations coordinator at Citrus College. However, that day I got to climb onto the roof of one of the local schools with our member Robert Sarabia to get a lesson in heating, ventilation, and air conditioning maintenance. This was new to me, and it was for the district superintendent who climbed up there with us. If you have a positive working relationship with your school or college district, please consider the program. If you're interested, please talk to your area director or your labor relations representative. Nominations are accepted through the field offices and the area directors in December and January, and the association president selects the chapters soon after. Only 10 are selected, but all nominees are considered and perseverance pays off. I've learned this over the years of watching this program in action. Few administrators who participate in this program see our members the same way again. It gives those who make decisions about our work a real opportunity to understand the work we do. And what's better than that at the bargaining table? I want to thank all my appointed leaders who have worked so hard this year and have exemplified the power of us. Your dedication to our members across the state goes unmatched. The regional representatives work to be the eyes and ears of the association president and ensure that our internal governance structure is followed. Our R's put in countless hours, and I am ever so grateful for your hard work. Will all the R's stand and please be recognized? Equally, I want to thank the hardworking committees who each endeavor to improve the lives of our members through their specific committee tasks. I appreciate the time, commitment, and creative ideas that flow from your work. Without you, most of our goals would truly be unattainable. You'll get to meet each one and hear a bit about their committee throughout this conference. Will all the members of the Standing Committee stand and be recognized? I want to pay a special thank you to the Retire Unit Board for their hard work and many years of service to CSEA. You have worked diligently on behalf of the retirees and active members, and we appreciate your continued involvement. Will the R Retire Unit Executive Board stand and be recognized, please? Additionally, I want to thank those who serve as political action coordinators on the Judicial Panel, the Complaint Review Panel, the Member Trainer Bureau, Audit Bureau, and all other special work groups and task force. Each one of these roles plays a vital role in our, making our organization run smoothly and prepares us to be successful well into the future. If you are a member of any of these groups, please stand and be recognized. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's give all these members one more round of applause and appreciation for their time, commitment to our union. And of course, I must not forget a group of very hardworking individuals, your board of directors. They are an amazing team who work diligently on your behalf. Each of them brings their own unique strengths to make up the board family. They have been tireless in fulfilling their duties and have worked in, and participated in trainings throughout the year to better themselves, to better serve our members. I want you to know how proud I am to serve with each and every one of them. 
I encourage you to review the board minutes each month to see the work they are doing for you and all members of CSCA. Thank you to the board of directors. Now let's take a moment to look at our future. CSCA has grown, endured, and evolved for the last 89 years through the power of us. We've experienced the good times, and then the tough times, and now back to better times again. It is actually a repeat cycle we know often happens. In the coming months, CSCA will have one of our greatest challenges. The Supreme Court of the United States of America has agreed to hear a case that will challenge public employee unions. This case is about an Orange County teacher, Rebecca Friedrichs, who does not want to be a member of the teachers union, nor does she want to pay her fair share of negotiation and representing, representation costs. She's asking the court to rule that unions have to provide services to public workers that they would normally represent even if they don't pay for those services. The case is scheduled to begin during the Supreme Court's next term, which starts in October. Public employee unions nationwide are eagerly awaiting and cautiously preparing for the court's decision. CSEA's elected leaders, executive staff, and legal department have been actively following this case since it began its journey through the judicial system. We've been making preparations in the event the Supreme Court does not find in our favor. And you will hear more about this case from both the executive director and the director of field operations during their reports at this conference. But I want to assure you that we are looking at all possibilities. CSE has nearly 37,000 service fee payers from whom we collect about 18% of our budget, approximately $10.5 million annually. Losing Fredericks would mean a cut of $10.5 million in the CSEA budget, effective the date of the decision. While we are presenting you a balanced budget, we are also being proactive by preparing a contingency plan that would have to go into effect if the decision does not go in our favor. Executive Director Lowe and the department heads and the board are looking at the entire budget and how we might, might make cuts in the least disruptive method possible. However, there is an even better alternative to cuts, and that is a combination of converting service fee, current service fee payers to full members and ensuring that all new employees become members immediately upon being hired. Of course, if the decision does go our way, we'll be in great shape to finish out the year. No matter the outcome, our work and preparation for this case means that CSEA will merge a stronger union with better recruiting tools and staff and members trained in organizing and union building. This year will also face the beginnings of a tough election cycle as well. In 2016, we will elect a new president of the United States, a new US state senator, and we will fight once again to keep a pension initiative off the ballot. And if we are not able to keep it off the ballot, we will do all in our power to defeat it. We've done it before, and we will do it again. You see, with these challenges ahead of us, I know we have the power of all of us in CSA to be successful. We have weathered many storms and have risen to the challenges each and every time. There is nothing that will stop us from being on the right side of victory. We will weather this fight together. We will bring our members to the edge if we have to, and we will show everyone once again that the power of us will not be stopped. Now I stand here today with tremendous pride. I'm proud to present you a balanced growth budget. I'm proud of how we train our members and how we will only increase the opportunities for members to grow in the union and grow professionally as we enhance our training programs. I'm proud of how we work in effective coalition and also take vital leadership positions to use our expertise to help these coalitions be as effective as possible. I'm proud of the work we've done to bring a national classified member of the year program close to reality and will beam with pride at the first Champions of Change honorees who will be awarded at the White House this year. 
I'm proud of our vision as a union, preparing constantly for both the challenges that may face us and the opportunities to become an even better voice for each of you. I'm proud of the partnership that I've watched grow between our staff and the members. Knowing that we all want the same thing and focusing on the power that comes from a dedicated staff of motivated members to continue our push the union forward. And I'm proud of each of you. As your president, I get to watch you grow in your unionism and professionalism. I watch as you take on new and bigger challenges and meet them head on with an energy I only wish I could bottle. I stand before you proud of our union and all that it has become. And I thank you for allowing me to serve as your president.